Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the step sequencer in Logic Pro 10.5.1, which is the latest version of Logic that just came out this year. It was a few months ago, in fact, and I haven't really up until now had much of a chance to play with all the new features. There's a lot of great things about this new release, but the one that I really love is the step sequencer. It reminds me of the way that we used to put together beats in the old analog equipment, such as the Roland TR909 drum machine, the TB303 bass line. All of these old instruments had a step sequencer, which allowed you to very quickly and easily put together a beat or a rhythm. And it's just a great way of putting together tracks. So I'm really glad they've introduced it in Logic, and that's what I'm going to show you today. In addition to the drum pattern that we'll create, I'll put in a bass line with the help of the Korg Minilog synthesizer, which I have here in front of me. I've got it connected to an AudioBox USB interface, and that allows me to play the keyboard via MIDI, and it goes straight into Logic. In addition to that, I've got my iPad, which has got the Logic Remote app installed. If you haven't already got the Logic Pro Remote app, I highly encourage you to download it. If you have an iPad or an iPhone, it allows you to play your notes in via the app, control the mixer, and do all sorts of things, including access the step sequencer, which I'm going to show you how to do today. So we're going to have lots of fun putting together a beat in today's tutorial. Let's get started. So I've got Logic open up, and usually the first thing you're asked to do when you create a new project is to start with either a software instrument, audio track, a drummer track, external MIDI, or a guitar and bass track. So to create an electronic drum beat, we're gonna start with the software instrument option and I'm gonna use an empty channel strip. Then on the left-hand side, you get a range of different instruments. Of course, we're gonna go for the electronic drum kit. I'm gonna click on that and then we get a whole range of electronic drum kits that we can choose from. Now, if you haven't used this before, you'll notice that many of these are grayed out, which means they're not preloaded. They're available for free. You just need to click on the arrow to the right-hand side of the drum kit in order to download them. They're absolutely free. It takes a few moments to download, but once you do download them, they're there on your hard drive and can be called up at any time. So I'm gonna start with the classic Roland TR909, which is what I referenced earlier in the video. This is, of course, the most iconic, famous drum machine that came out in the 80s, and it is pretty much a staple of all electronic music. It's got a very clean and pure sound that you'll be most familiar with, so we'll start with that. So once I've clicked on the drum machine I want to use, I then need to go into the track window, right click by holding down control and mouse at the same time and create a pattern region. We're not going to create a MIDI region, we want to create a pattern region. Once you do that, you'll see a yellow box appears for the first two bars. And if you look below, you get access to the brand new step sequencer. And by default, it will start off at 16 steps. You can change that anywhere from a range of 12 steps all the way up to 64 steps for a more complex pattern. I like to stay within the range of 16, which gives you pretty much two bars of your beat. And then I'll use the actual track window in order to expand my arrangement, which we'll get to later on in the tutorial. So to start with, let's drop in a kick on the first beat. We'll add another one on five, nine, and 13. And that will give us our standard 4-4 kick. I'll now click on the play button to preview. Oh, by the way, you need to create a loop region by dragging your mouse on the top indicator to match the length of your pattern region. Now that I've got my 4-4 kick, I could continue to add hi-hats, for example, in this particular cell. which would be the easiest way of doing it, but I prefer to break down my drum into multiple tracks so that I can play around with it in the arrangement later on. So rather than adding my hi-hats in that particular sequence, I'm gonna turn them off. I'm going to duplicate that track. So we get a duplicate instrument of the Roland TR-909. Then I'm gonna add my hi-hats in that new sequence. Let's check that out. So now we've got a classic 4-4 beat with some hi-hats. 
And the next thing I'll do is add a clap. So again, I'll duplicate the previous instrument. I'll right click, control mouse and create pattern region. If it goes out of alignment, just drag it back into shape. And now I'm gonna look for the clap. Claps we can put on five and 13. Let's try that. Now you can of course experiment, add more claps. and remove them as you like. You could also look at adding some snares. Again, we'll duplicate the track. Now I'll look for a snare drum, here we go. There's a couple of different sounding snares here. So I'll choose a second one. Let's try that. Okay, so now that we have our four different drum tracks, we can start to play with the arrangement. So in order to start building a track, we need to increase the loop range in the top indicator bar. So I'm gonna put my mouse in that section and drag across, and we'll go all the way up to 16 bars. Now before I go in and make my changes to the arrangement, I like to actually label each one of these tracks so I can clearly see which one is which. So in order to change the title, double click on the track title and add your text. Oh, what was this, claps? And finally snare drum. So you can see the top layer is my kick. There's two ways of doing this. You can simply copy and paste by holding down the option key, clicking on that pattern region and moving it across and we have multiple cells that way. Or you can drag the end of that pattern cell region and drag it across for a loop. So it really depends on whether you wanna create breaks in between, which quite often I do. So I find myself duplicating the track rather than dragging across to extending it. So we'll start with the kick, we'll bring in the hi-hats a little bit later and the claps can come in at the very end. And here we go. So that's all there is to it when it comes to building your drum track. The next thing I wanna do is to improve the sound of each one of those instruments. Let's start with the kick drum. If I click on the kick track, you'll notice that there's a preloaded list of effects in the channel strip for each one of those instruments. So let's start with the compressor in order to make that kick punch out of the mix. So I'll turn the compressor on, I'll go into the settings, and we are now going to increase the gain and the input, that's it originally, that's it with some compression, that's sounding a lot better. We can go into each one of the tracks and do the same, so hi-hats, add some compression, it's not just compression that you can add, you'll see there's other Really interesting effects you can add, such as overdrive to make it really kick out, bit crusher, enveloper, there's a delay, reverb, and channel EQ. And beyond that, you also get access to the drum kit tones, which once again can be changed on each individual track, which is why I like to separate 
all of the different elements onto separate tracks so that I get independent control over the sound of each one of the drum elements. If you can't see the controls setting, click on the smart controls icon on the top left hand menu and And go ahead and tweak those to your heart's content until you get the sound that you're looking for. The other great thing about this setup is that you can actually change the drum kit completely whilst maintaining your patterns. So currently I selected the Roland 909 kick for my first track. I could go into any one of these different electronic drum kits for a completely different sound. Let's check that out. Here's Orion. Here's another Onyx Club. No Man's Joint. Pile Driver. Prismatica. Each one has its own very unique sound for each one of the instruments. Let's try the hi-hats. Let's change that over to the Onyx Club. Orion. Oh, I like that. I'd probably stay with that. And then for the claps, let's try Lindrum. Futura. Electronic Pop. And that's all there is to creating a pattern using the new step sequencer in Logic Pro. Now, for those of you wanting to see a little bit more, I've got a bonus section where I'm going to be adding the bass line and a synth melody just for a little bit of fun. So in order to do that, I'm gonna create a new software instrument track and I'm gonna select the retro synth and I'm gonna to go to the third group of patches called synth bass and we'll try some of these out. And I'll just play the bass line in with the Korg mini log being used as an external MIDI controller. When you double click on the green MIDI region of the track, you get access to the piano roll and here you can quantize them for better timing. So I've just turned the arpeggiator on, which you can access by tapping on the smart controls icon, and then you can select from the arpeggiator presets. I've chosen one called the Classic Cycle 03. And now I can just tap on the synth instrument on the top left and scroll through those bass presets until I find the one that sounds right for this track. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this demonstration of how to use the brand new step sequencer in Logic Pro. If you want to see more videos from me, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. See you on the next one. Bye for now.